Okay, we're back to do part two of our temporary thermostat installation. This is our thermostat of choice going forward, this Emerson model here, along with the dehumidistat, as explained in the last video. There's the part number. Um, this thermostat will do uh, two stages of heating and cooling, but it will not control an economizer. It will not control uh, the variable output of a digital scroll compressor. And uh, what's the other thing it won't do? It won't do dehumidification. That's why we have that. So um, we're going to have to look at all of those items. The dehumidification is answered by that. We're going to, in a moment, we'll take a look at the uh, how to override the damper and what to do about the VFD for the fan speed. Um, so take a look at the thermostat here. Notice this right now. I just want to point this out. See how this looks. Heat off, cool. Okay. So to get into the menu here, you push the menu button. Well, hold it a moment. And then you get into the, the menu for the tourists. You know, the easy one, time and schedule, that sort of thing. If you hold it for eight seconds, you'll get into the big menu. And that's where we need to make a few changes here. This is very important, right? So... Um, the, if we go into this, this pamphlet is uh, handy. It's very simple. There's, the settings in this uh, thermostat are quite limited. They're not too involved. But the menu selections, you see 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, those are the screens. Um, the very first one is your outdoor equipment well, <clears throat> air conditioner or heat pump. This particular unit is heating only. I'm sorry. Air conditioner and gas heat. Um, on, on, if you got a heat pump, you're going to have to set it up for a heat pump, right? So there are the possible settings right there. Now, what's this one set up for? It's set up for air conditioning two. We do have two stages. What are our options? Heat pump. We don't want heat pump. Let's go air conditioning two, right? Um, we'll go to next. Here we've got uh, the next setting is what? what is it? output for heating. What are our options here? Electric two-stage, there's a fan-only unit. That you would set for a heat pump. Gas one, gas two. We, no, we only have get one gas burner on this thing, so that's where we need to set it. Next, next. Okay, uh, I'm going to go through most of these because they're not important. Um, the mo there's one for scheduling, you'll see in the guide there, comes in the box, uh, but screen number 88 is absolutely important, okay? This is your auto changeover screen. Now, if, if you don't select auto changeover, this thing will stay in cooling forever or in heating forever, depending on what season you set the thing up. We don't want that, and we've had many a complaint about that very issue. So. And unfortunately, it comes out of the box set to off, and you need to change that. So now it's on. So now we have an auto feature on this thermostat. So let's get out of here, exit. Notice how that changed. We now have the word auto up there. Okay, so please don't forget to do that. Now, I just made a video yesterday on overriding this damper and a little in-depth discussion about this actuator here. Notice these little gizmos down here. Okay, you need these tools to override this, well, and all the parts that just fell across the floor to override this actuator. You put the Allen wrench in here, you want to set this to your minimum position of 15%, right? Remember, we don't have economizer control on that temporary thermostat. So say you set it to there, or wherever your desired position is. If you just let go, look what happens. So that's spring-loaded to go to the closed position in a power failure. This is a two-handed operation. One of the things that just fell on the floor here is this little gizmo, it's a little plastic Phillips. It fits right into this thing here, and it's a two-handed operation, and you turn that thing while that thing's in, right in the desired position, and it'll lock it. I'll show you that. Okay, now I've got it locked in the way more than 15% percent, percent, uh, position, but it's just for demonstration. I would take this thing out because if you just bump that, it'll release it and it'll spin back to nothing. 
If the next thing our thermostat doesn't do that we got to accommodate here when we're in a, a temporary uh, thermostat situation, this is a uh, variable capacity compressor, right? There's the unloading solenoid right back there. You'll notice that this one doesn't have that. Um, this compressor works through this controller right here, okay? This thing takes a zero to five volt signal and converts it to an on-off 24 volt output to that relay I just pointed out on the side of the compressor. A digital scroll compressor here, we're looking at the wiring diagram over here on the wall, works with a zero to five volt input on these two terminals. You'll see on the terminal strip over there. Um, zero to five volts come into these two terminals, C1 and C2. C2 is the voltage input, C1 is neutral. Now, this controller just happens to have a suction pressure transducer that has a five volt power supply. So, hey, that's convenient. We can jumper this five volts over to this C2, which is the maximum in the range, and the compressor will be a, a anytime you enable it, it'll just go to 100%. So back at the controller here, P3 and C2, I have put a jumper in between those two. Okay, so this unit, once enabled, will now just run at 100%, full out. So what's important here, of course, is when we pull these thermostats, if we pull them, when we pull them, that jumper has got to come out, okay? Otherwise, this thing will never be a variable capacity compressor again. So we've, we see that problem a lot. So the other thing we got to address that our temporary thermostat doesn't do is fan speed. It does not ramp the fan up and down, so we need to set the fan to a speed right here on the VFD and have it be constant speed. Now, this is going to be your default home screen. Uh, frequency 20.4. Now I look at that and I, I see 20.4 and you're probably going to see that number a lot. That's the Aeon factory programmed minimum run speed. So if you only enable this thing, just give it a digital on off, it'll go to 20.4 hertz. Um, because it, it it's, uh, it's not seeing a, an input signal to ramp up. Okay? Um, so now we want to get into the parameter menus, and there's a parameter called B1-01 we want to change so that this thing uh, will ignore an input signal and instead just use the keypad for a setting, okay? So to get to B101, all we need to do is uh, press this a few times to get to the parameter menu. And that uh, menu looks like that, parameter, okay? Now we hit enter. Yaskawa's very first parameter is always A101. Let's go up, up arrow to B101. Enter, enter, enter. It's set to 01. So 01 means, whoops, the camera's not doing too well here. 01 means it's looking for an analog input signal to ramp the speed up. We want to change that to zero. Enter. Okay, so now when we back out, we're going to see a different frequency on there, most likely. So, escape, 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 escape. Oh, yeah, look at that. We're at 56 hertz. So, that is the keypad input frequency right there. And that's probably good enough. But if you wanted to change that, hit enter. You can push that down or whatever. Hit enter again, and it'll stick at 36, wherever you want to put it. 56, enter. Let's just leave it right there. 56 hertz it is. Just one final note. I did a, uh, a, a wire count on all permutations of unit and discovered that you'll never need more than an eight wire bundle. So conveniently, that's an eight wire bundle. That's all you'll ever need. So on a, on a heating only unit, you're hooking up the heating only side on a cooling or a, a heat pump, you're only hooking up the zero or the, uh, the O terminal. So. So there you have it.